It's time for a Vikings Rookie Roundup. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lufaga Show. I'm Lufaga's rocking it solo right now. And you know what? Minnesota Vikings, the bye week is officially over. They have the Cardinals coming to town. But there's still uh, not a lot of things to talk about right now at the moment. So before we hop into the Cardinals, let's look back at how the Minnesota Vikings 2022 rookie class has fared halfway through the season. Before we do that, be sure to remember this video is brought to you by Lift Bridge Brewing Company. Hit them up at the facilities in New Richmond, Wisconsin, or Stillwater, Minnesota, or find their bill, beer at a local liquor store near you. And we are about 50 away from 8,000 subscribers, so keep dropping hashtag 8,000 in the comments. We will draw a hashtag 8,000 from one of these videos uh, until we hit that big mark and we have some kind of fantastic giveaway for that. So definitely drop hashtag 8,000. All right, let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings rookie class through the first half of the season. Yeah, I mean, with the extra game, it's not quite the midway point, but close enough, close enough. So let's go through and go through every single pick here. Um, and maybe come up with some kind of a grade for the first half of the season. Lewis Seen, our first round pick, he did show up in three games. He played two defensive snaps, 34 special team snaps. He also snapped his leg, uh, which was not a great thing. You hate to lose your first round pick. You hope Lewis comes back 100% healthy after this. But unfortunately for Lewis Seen, his rookie year will go down as a wash. It's going to be an incomplete if you're giving out a grade on that one. Uh, Again, this happens. We saw it happen to Chad Greenway, his rookie season, way back in 2006. He was lost for the season. Lewis seen at least made it to regular season. But uh, fortunately, this happens to at least one first-round rookie every single year. And this year, it was the Vikings' turn to get bit in the ass with that. Uh, confidence is still high. Lewis seen will turn into a fantastic player for the Vikings. Let's go to Andrew Booth, another high pick, second-round pick, uh, very early, and he has not seen much of the field. Two games played, zero defensive snaps, eight snaps on special teams. This was the dude's M.O. in college. Can stay healthy Why he falls to the second round. Very talented player uh, when he is on the field. He talks a lot, plays with a lot of swagger. We, we saw that first day of camp. He was talking shit to, uh, I don't know if it was K.J. Osborne, Justin Jefferson, whoever. Uh, but this is a guy we definitely want to see more of, and we're hoping that we'll see more of him on the second half. If anybody's going to bounce back from an incomplete for the first, for the, through the first eight weeks of the season and have a much better grade in the second half, I think Andrew Booth Jr. is definitely a high uh, contender for that. Um, again, just with, I don't know, can you move this guy to the slot? Because uh, anybody other than Chandler Sullivan would be a blessing at this point. Let's go to another second-round pick. Minnesota Vikings used two second-rounders, and the second one was their guard, Ed Ingram, who earned the starting right guard spot right out of camp. He's had six starts. Uh, consensus seems to be that his run blocking is much better than his pass blocking. Grades and highlights will show you the same. They'll confirm that theory. Uh, Ingram's a guy who has kind of struggled in both aspects of the game the last couple of weeks. Had a tough game against the Dolphins. Um not much better against the Bears. So Ingram, you know, you see these rookies. It's a lot of up and down play, especially an alignment, interior alignment at that. So I do think Ed Ingram is going to have plenty of good games. Yeah, his his rookie season may end up with a bunch of highs and lows, good and bad. But you, you, that's what happens with a young uh, offensive lineman. So I, nothing nothing but praise for Ed Ingram. Uh, the fact that he won the starting job and he's learning so much, so much experience he'll be gaining this year. I uh, expect him to come back. Uh, and be be much more improved and more steady and reliable next year. And then, like I said, this season, more ups and downs. But Ed Ingram, six starts. Vikings are definitely getting production. So we're basing this grade on a production value. Ed Ingram giving you six starts. Uh, so two out of three, or one out of three, Vikings getting some uh, run out of their first three picks. Let's go to another another high pick. Third rounder, Brian Asamo, linebacker out of Oklahoma. He's played in six games. He does have two tackles. Made more of an impact on special teams, but I do think this is a guy we're going to start seeing more of. you got Kyler Murray coming to town this Sunday. I think Asimo is probably going to be asked to uh, sh to shadow him, to spy him like he did when they faced uh, – who the hell was it? Uh, I've, oh, Justin Fields. He spied Justin Fields when they played the Bears. So I think he'll have a similar role this week against Kyler Murray. Going to the fourth round in another corner, Caleb Evans. Quasey's boy from Missouri. He's played in six games. He has four tackles. Uh, again, more of an outside corner. You see him either replacing Cam down. So if they're not happy with his performance or if he's dinged for a minute, he comes in there. Again, uh, the problem really seems to be in the slot with Shannon Sullivan. So not really a Caleb Evans MO. But at this point, I'm willing to try anything. But six games played, four tackles for a fourth-round rookie. 
not bad, not bad. I mean, I think he's going to finish where everybody assumed he would. I think the only way he gets on the field more is if there is an injury to a starter in Peterson or Dantzler, and let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's go to a fifth rounder, Sezi Atomeo, the defensive end from Minnesota. Uh, he's got no stats, no stats for Sezi, nothing we can really talk about there. Um, again, the fact, the only thing that concerns me, you got Jonathan Bullard and, and James Lynch playing ahead of him. Doesn't say a lot for about how ready he says he could be. So uh, that's a little disappointing. But fifth rounder, he's on the team. What else can you ask for? Ty Chan, the running back UNC. He's played in two games. He's had one special teams tackle. He's hurt as well. I think he comes back in a couple weeks. Uh, even when he was active, I, I really thought the Vikings would have tried using this guy a little bit more in the backfield, give him a touch, give him a you know, throwing the ball from the backfield or something. But he's really done nothing but special teams, and he's been inactive more games than he has been active. Uh, but Arian Lowe, the six-round defensive tackle from Illinois, he is on the practice squad. Who knows with Ole Udo's situation, maybe he'll be called up here soon. Uh, again, I'm not going to speculate on that, but I think I just did. Uh, wide receiver, six-rounder, Jalen Naylor from Michigan State. He's played in five games. He has one catch from 13 yards. That catch did not come from Kirk Cousins. It came from our punter, Ryan Wright. Uh, he just scooped that thing up before we hit the turf, so great job on that, Jalen Naylor. Well done. He's played in five games. Again, one reception, 13 yards. Uh, Nick Muse. Nick Muse. In case you guys forgot about Nick Muse, this is what he looks like. Our seventh-round rookie. Uh, he has been active for one game, and he has no receptions. No receptions at all. So Nick Muse, you know, seventh-rounder guy being active, good for him. Good for Nick Muse uh, being active. But now here it is, the star of the class so far, the head of the class, is our undrafted opponent, Ryan Wright. 27 punts on the year uh, for 1,216 yards. He's got a long of 73. He's averaging 45 yards a punt. Ryan Wright is in the zone. Ryan Wright is your Minnesota Vikings midpoint of the season, rookie of the year. Yeah, it's a seventh-round undrafted, no, undrafted punter. No one expected that uh, when the season started, that Ryan Wright – an undrafted punter would even make the team, let alone be the rookie of the year at this point. But I don't know how else you go any other way right now than other than Ryan Wright. Uh, so good for him. Uh, looking at this grade as a whole, this class as a whole, yes, it's not fair to judge, to put a grade on anything, especially through six games, but we're going to do it anyway. You got the two top guys not playing much at all. Uh, Ed Ingram is starting, so that's good. So there's some good, there's some bad. You got a punter who's punting out of his mind as an undrafted guy. I, I'm going to give this like a D plus, a D plus so far. Uh, I really thought we'd see a lot more production out of this class. Obviously, the injuries are a huge factor in that in that grade being a little bit low. But even like guys like Brian Asamoah, I really thought we'd see more of. Uh, I thought Ty Chandler would have had a bigger role earlier in the season. Maybe he still will. But uh, again, you got a punter who's putting the shit out of the ball. And you hopefully you get Andrew Booth into some games and maybe Asamoah starts picking up a better a little more run here moving forward, but that's it. Let me, what do you guys know? Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, higher, lower this grade? Would you even grade it at this point? Uh, are you disappointed? Uh, obviously, moving forward, I, I should, I, before I wrap this thing up, I do want to say I'm not worried about this class. I'm not concerned. Uh, it, it takes, it really truly does take three years for rookie class to, to get fully evaluated. And yes, it's not starting out great, but there's no reason to worry. Uh, Especially, I mean, Lewis Seen will come back. Andrew Booth's going to get healthier. So there's a lot of upside still here in this class. Do not give up on it by any means. This is not the 2021 draft class in Minnesota Vikings. This one still has some hope, plenty of hope. So right now, not great. I'm giving D-plus through, uh, through six games. And, again, drop your grades below. And uh, also, keep your school in your home.